This is your recoil before watching this video. And this is your recoil after watching this video. What's up guys, and in today's video, I'll be giving you six tips to instantly improve your recoil overnight in Rainbow Six Siege. The first of which being very simple, and it's literally just going into the shooting range and shooting this target until you get a good feel of your recoil. This may seem very, very simple, but there's a very advanced way that you can do it to get even better and faster results. Let me explain. Instead of just shooting the target and hoping for the best and maybe trying to memorize recoil that way, which is still effective, what you should do is compare and contrast the base recoil recoil to the recoil control that you have now. What I mean by this is put your crosshair at the bottom of the target here, and you're just going to hold your trigger or your mouse button, depending if you're on PC or console, and you're not going to control the recoil one bit. You're just going to let the bullets carry you. Now, as you can see by the recoil pattern here, the recoil is top heavy and it goes to the left slightly. So if you want to control the recoil, you have to do the opposite of where the bullets go, obviously, right? So if it's top heavy, that means I need to pull down more. And if it goes slightly to the left, then I need to pull down slightly to the right. So with that being said, I'm going to consciously try to pull down and to the right a tad bit. So let's see what my recoil looks like after doing that. not too terrible right and it's going to vary from range to range to range so now let's try it at maybe 10 hell let's try it at 20 meters right so we're gonna do it again we're not gonna control the recoil right again just top left right top left we already know this let's clear it let's get it over here and try to control it consciously from this range now obviously it's not going to be that good right but as long as you're keeping it within the circle or within the same general area and it's not leaving the same general area that you're trying to hit you're going to do pretty well keeping in mind also that most gunfights actually happen from eight meters or ten meters on bigger maps you can use that as a way to really really get your recoil control down so that you win most gunfights going to 30 meters is not really going to help you at all and 20 meters honestly is pushing it now using this technique to help actually control your in-game recoil is nice but it does take a little bit of time what doesn't take any time, however, is putting on the right attachments. Now, if you're on PC and if you're on console, there are a few attachments that you can apply to any gun and it control your recoil pretty well. But on some guns, you need very specific attachments. So let's talk about console first. Mainly on console, you want to put compensator on pretty much anything. This is due to the fact that because you have a joystick, it is much easier to control your up and down recoil than it is your right to left recoil. But us PC players don't have this problem because we have 20 or so different muscles in our entire arm and hand that can control recoil simultaneously so it's much easier for us to do this so compensator is not as necessary as you can see ella's scorpion with a compensator on is pretty easy to control these side to side recoil with it just looks like it has a lot of vertical kick obviously until you get to like the later bullets but you get the idea if i were to take compensator off of this gun however and i were to put on let's say suppressor god forbid i put suppressor on the scorpion and i actually try to consciously control recoil look at how much more difficult it is for me to do this that was me actually trying as well, and look at how many bullets weren't in this center circle here. About twice as many as before. And this doesn't just apply for side to side recoil with the compensator, it also applies to other weapons. So let's take Twitch's F2 for example. This gun typically has a lot of up and down recoil. If I were to put something like suppressor or extended barrel on it, which are both attachments that don't control up or down recoil, then look at how hard it would be for me to control the recoil on this gun. Now, I stayed within the circle, but I was really trying to aim for the center of the circle, and none of the bullets hit the center of the circle. That's how hard it is. But now, let's put on a flash hider. I'll put it next to these bullets right here. It's now relatively in the same space. The only issue with this gun specifically is the first bullet gives you a lot of kick, right? If you see, if I just do like a regular recoil spread, everything's pretty compact except for the first and second bullet. So maybe even having flash hider is the wrong move. Maybe instead we want to put on muzzle break. This reduces the overall weapon kick of single shot firing, or in different words, it reduces the weapon kick of the first to second bullet, which is what we want on Twitch's F2, right? If I respawn, let's look at a third different path. 
Now, it makes the vertical recoil a lot worse than the one in the center that I did over here, but you don't even notice the difference between the first and second bullet. They're all grouped together. So the higher of a sensitivity I have, maybe it'll be easier to control the vertical recoil or the more practice I have, whatever, but you get the idea. You can use attachments to tailor make recoil for what sensitivity you have and what types of recoil you're better at controlling. Whether it be because you're good at just controlling horizontal recoil because you have a good arm, or maybe you're bad at controlling horizontal recoil because you're on console so you want to have different attachments according to what type of player you are and what you're good at but do you know what else you can tailor make to make your recoil even easier to control it's actually your fov and aspect ratio which if you go into your options and press display you will find pretty easily now if you're on console you can skip this tip because only pc players are able to change this but if you're on pc hear me out the two most common and easy to play with aspect ratios for playing rainbow six siege are 4 3 and 16 10. 4-3 is better because it gives you stretch res, which makes your enemies bigger, which gives you a more of a reaction time to actually see them. Now, if things are wider on your screen, then things are going to look different on your screen. Guns, enemies, whatever you're shooting at are going to look different. So the recoil at which you control your gun is also going to look and feel different as well. Not only this, but aspect ratio and FOV go hand in hand. If you have too high of an FOV for something like 4-3, recoil actually becomes a tad bit harder because what you're shooting at and your crosshair in general aren't as stretched and you have to worry about more of your peripherals which is going to make your gun seem a little smaller and everything just in general seem a little smaller which consciously is going to make you control recoil differently but if you have a balanced fov and aspect ratio which in 4.3's case would be an 87 or an 86 then this isn't as much of an issue for you now if you're playing on 1610 then you should put it on 290 because that's just what's balanced for that aspect ratio as you can see it's a lot more compressed but i have about the same amount of recoil control. If anything, actually, I have better recoil control on 1610. But you get the idea. You can tailor make your aspect ratio and your FOV to what you're best at when it comes to controlling your recoil. As you can see, clear cut example that I was easily able to do that. And it's something that you can change and have an instant improvement on as you can see right there. Now, shooting targets like that is cool, but it's only going to get you so far. But you need to get used to shooting actual players, which is where you're going to move into lane 2. In lane 2, as you can see there's an actual person you can turn this person if you want to shoot them in the side or the back of the head you can have them crouched as well if you want to get used to crouch level you can have them prone hell you could even have them behind a wall if you want to know what it's like to wall bang people it even gives you a little wall hack outline too which is pretty nice now my point here is that you need to get used to controlling recoil onto an actual player because ideally you want to be shooting all of your bullets in their head right because it's a one shot headshot game this ovally looking target especially one that moves and is on the head of an actual player looks a lot different than a circle with a crosshair in it that you can easily use to control your recoil. With all of these other circles and lines in it as well, it gives your brain a lot of points of reference to be able to use to control bullets and recoil because you have a center point. On a dummy though, you don't get that luxury because all you're really focusing on is their shoulders and their head whenever you're aiming at them. And it's a lot smaller of a target too. So once you feel like you've roughly got most of the recoil down for a gun, kind of like I do here, then switch to the dummy and practice shooting the dummy and controlling recoil on their head. If you can't do that, then you've got some stuff to work on. So I'm gonna sit here and do it until I can get the recoil down packed pretty well. As you can see here, I'm even like throwing and crouching, I'm throwing and leaning as well to like actually get used to how I would like shoot people in game so that I'm consciously like controlling recoil while I'm moving. Because an issue I have is like once I start thinking about quick peeking or thinking about actually shooting people, I'm not consciously controlling recoil anymore. So throwing that in will help you a lot. Now, as you can see, my recoil control on this guy has gotten a lot better than the first clip right here where I whiffed an entire mag, as you can see on screen. And all it took me was like maybe 30 seconds to a minute of just consciously doing this, doing this, doing this, and actually doing it on a player model. It really is not that hard. But shooting inanimate objects that don't shoot you back in a non-realistic scenario is only going to get you so good at recoil control. So it's time to go in game. This is where the fifth tip comes in. You want to be going into the arcade playlist and putting on deathmatch and free for all. 
The reason you do this is because you want to get used to the thought of actively controlling recoil in gunfights. Like I said, when you're in the heat of the moment, your adrenaline's pumping, it's a 1vx scenario, you're not thinking about a lot of things, right? Especially your recoil control. It's just like the last thing that's on your mind. But if you go into an arcade and you shoot actual players with actual stakes on the line, an actual scoreboard, maybe you get your adrenaline pumping again, and you're actively the entire time trying to think about recoil control, you will train your brain to actively try to control recoil more in every gunfight so that you have less moments where your adrenaline is completely throwing everything that you've ever learned about siege out of the window mid gunfight. This happens to me all the time and the way you mitigate this is just by practicing with that mindset so that you play with that mindset. Now this is more of a long term fix, it's not going to instantly improve your recoil control, but you can do this even once or twice before a ranked game and you'll notice in gunfights that you're actively thinking about it even if it's just a little bit more than you usually do. So it is still kind of an instant improvement, just not all the way. But it's definitely something that you should keep in mind because in-game application is everything. You can have all of these strats in mind, you can practice as much as you want to, but if you're not actually walking that walk and actually putting it in your gameplay, none of it matters. The final tip on having perfect recoil control is using your recoil control with your movement. Now, recoil control is great, but if your movement and positioning are bad, it's not going to matter because you're going to lose the gunfight anyway. Now we talked about last tip, using your recoil control for different things, like using it in tandem with your flicking, your tracking, and practicing all of that together and consciously thinking about it in a deathmatch. But when it comes to an actual ranked game, it's different because the way you play is different. You're more passive than you are in a deathmatch. You're holding angles differently. You're quick peeking angles and swinging things differently. And you want to implement your recoil control differently because of that. A great way that you can do this is by going into T-Hunts or when the new season comes out, the little map patrol, whatever the thing is called that's coming out where you shoot like little target dummies on the maps you can do those what you want to do to get this better specifically is by going into maps and practicing your recoil control while you're moving and clearing around the map so let's say i open this door right and i'm actively quick peeking things and recoil controlling when i see an enemy right so you actually seeing an enemy and going around the map and moving like you would in a ranked game not like a deathmatch but in a ranked game like let's say okay i know that they're cc so i'm gonna sit here and i'm gonna walk up and hold the window and pre-fire if anyone's like maybe right here or maybe right there right and i'm controlling recoil actively the entire time so really like go through your warm-up routine and actively think about controlling your recoil the entire time right if i'm in a death match i'm just gonna wide swing this and jump over the window but since i'm acting like i'm in a ranked game because i want to implement my recoil like i'm in a ranked game i'm gonna try to peek the angle you know he picks me i peek him I'm not gonna hop over this until I quick peek here, but really just getting used to how you would play in ranked and trying to actively control your recoil while you do it is going to make you, again, actively do it in your ranked games. Because like I said, perfect practice is nothing without perfect implementation. You can practice all you want to, but if you're not actually implementing it in your gameplay, it won't matter. Another cool thing about what I'm doing here is I'm controlling recoil in a certain way that I would only control recoil in an actual game. Because I'm, you know, simulating an actual game here, I'm only burst firing. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not shooting an entire mag. So now I know what it feels like to control recoil for just burst shots and not an entire mag, which is going to help me more in game than just sitting and looking at a target and holding down your left click, right? That's only going to help you so much because you're never going to really do that in a real game. But doing this final step and going around the map and clearing it with, you know, uh, T-Hunts or whenever the new season comes out, like a little like map tutorials or whatever, this is going to help me so much more. And it's something that you can instantly do as like a warm-up routine right before you head into a ranked game to instantly get better. It's really, really nice. So that's about it for this video. If you want to see this next video, my name's Alka, and uh, I'll see you there. Later.